Hey everyone, Mike here with Electrek, and today we're reviewing the Angway X26, a mammoth of a bike that is not just full suspension, it's actually triple suspension. Yeah, let's check it out. There's some serious excessiveness going on with the Angway X26. Let's start with that suspension, which is somehow a triple suspension setup. You've got a dual crown fork in the front, so that's fairly normal, as far as dual crown forks go at least. But in the rear, you've effectively got two swing arms, since the entire rear subframe is a swing arm with a monoshock in front of the seat tube, and then that padded rear rack holds a pair of coilover shocks for the second swing arm, which is basically just the chainstay tubes. So all told, you've got five shocks on this bike in three positions. When you add in the massive four inch wide tires, that translates to some seriously cushy ride feel. Yeah, you could take this off road, but I see it more as a Frankenstein of a commuter bike since you wouldn't really find a 90 pound e-bike very nimble while riding off-road trails. Instead, you could commute on this thing almost like it's a motorcycle, which, let's be honest here folks, it kind of is. It's got throttle control up to 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers per hour, which technically doesn't even keep it within class 3 designation but it can also be unlocked to hit 31 miles an hour or 50 kilometers per hour, which is really past class three designation. It's got a thousand watt hub motor in the rear to make quick work of acceleration and hill climbs. And so you're basically left with a really comfortable, really fast ride. It may look like a big bike and it is a big bike. At 90 pounds or 41 kilos, it's got, well, let's call it road presence. But even for what effectively is a monster truck of an e-bike, it's still a tiny slip of a thing compared to cars, and so you can still get the small vehicle benefits of bikes. That means you can own the road when you want to, or you can go back to just being a cyclist. Excuse me sir, coming through, don't mind me on my bike while you sit there in traffic. And since it's a folding bike too, you could theoretically better fit it into one of those cars if you should ever want to. Now, when we say that this is a folding bike, you gotta take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. I mean, it does fold, but it's not gonna be a small folding bike. There's only one folding location. It's right here in the middle. So you open that up and basically, the bike kinda breaks in half here. Let's see if I can even swing this sucker around. Ugh. All right, you can do this, Micah. And, all right, we're together. Let's see if we can lay this down gently. I feel like I'm riding this thing. Oh, jeez. All right, there's no elegant way to do this. This thing is a beast. Yes, it is effectively in half, but I'm not sure this is a better situation than we were before. Yeah, you could probably slide this in the back of an SUV easier, but this is a lot of bike and it doesn't fold that well. Let's see if I can reverse this. Whew. There's my workout for today. Whew. The bike also comes with more battery than you might expect. The main battery is 48 volts and 19 amp hours, and it's housed in the seat tube, giving over 900 watt hours of capacity. There's also a nice little lock on the seat post adjuster, so someone can't easily steal your seat and battery in one fell swoop. A second smaller battery is hidden in the top tube, giving you a total of almost 1300 watt hours of capacity. They say that's enough for up to 57 miles or 93 kilometers of range, but not the way most of us are gonna ride it. Half of that is a reasonable figure if you'll be riding at top speed most of the time. Which, trust me, you'll probably want to, especially if you're riding on lots of big, long, straight commuter style roads like I am. The rest of the bike, it has some nice components too, like hydraulic disc brakes, which I consider to be a necessity on such a big heavy bike like this. There's also an 8-speed Shimano drivetrain, though that derailleur down there tossing the chain around is just a tourney, which is acceptable but nothing fancy. And considering this bike is priced at $1,899 on its current sale, marked down from a $2,000 MSRP, you can't expect anything too fancy here. You're getting more suspension and more battery than most bikes at this price, which is a big plus for those who value performance. But on the other hand, the bike isn't exactly attractive looking. You've got zip-tied wires hanging just about everywhere, and the Frankenstein design isn't a beauty pageant winner either. So I see the Angway X26 as being the right bike for heavy riders who enjoy its big design and want a fast, powerful, and fully over-suspended design for street commuter use. If you want a nice, easy-going, fat tire e-bike for recreational rides, this could maybe do it, but it's not ideal. 
It's just too much bike for that, and you can find more affordable, lower performance options out there. This is a lot of bike for someone searching for a lot of bike. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the Angway X26. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.